Welcome to the deep dive. Ready to explore some truly groundbreaking ideas on health and aging. Absolutely, I am always ready to dive into something new. Today we're delving into the work of Ray Pete. This biologist has spent decades researching aging, nutrition, hormones, you name it, and he doesn't hold back on challenging conventional wisdom. I've been getting into his work recently, and it's definitely thought-provoking. So much to unpack there. And you've actually sent over a really amazing collection of articles and excerpts from his website, so clearly you're fascinated by his perspective. I am. There's something about the way he connects the dots between energy, our bodies, and even the environment that really resonates with me. Well, you've come to the right place. I've got someone here with me who can help us connect those dots. And that's expert speaker, whose knowledge in this field is remarkable. They'll help us unpack some of these dense ideas. Happy to be here. Perfect. Pete's central idea, the foundation of pretty much everything he talks about, is that energy and structure are interdependent at every level. It sounds simple enough on the surface, but, expert speaker, what does he actually mean by that? It's a fascinating concept, right? Pete challenges us to think about energy and structure not as two separate things, but as two sides of the same coin. He says we can't just view food as calories. Our bodies are much more dynamic than that. Okay, so how does that work? It's like building a house. You need energy to build it. But the structure itself, mm -hmm. like the materials, the design, all of that dictates how that energy flows and how long it lasts, how well that house can weather a storm. You know. Okay, I think I see where you're going with this. Exactly. The food we eat, that's the energy, right? Yeah. But the structure, that's the intricate web of cells, tissues, hormones, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that structure determines how well our bodies use that energy, how well they function, and how well they resist aging. So it's not just about what we eat, but how our very cells are structured, how they use that fuel. It's a whole different way of thinking about nutrition. Precisely. And it gets even more interesting. Pete links this idea to the impact of our environment on our health. He argues that a lot of the things we call aging or disease are actually degenerative processes caused by issues in our environment. You know, that reminds me, you mentioned earlier that you're concerned about the impact of stress on your health. Isn't that one of the environmental factors Pete talks about? Absolutely. He's got a lot to say about stress. Mm -hmm. Chronic stress, in particular, is a major culprit, according to Pete. And it's not just stress either. He points to things like exposure to radiation and even lack of oxygen at a cellular level as factors that can throw our bodies out of whack. It's like constantly exposing that well-built house we talked about to one storm after another. No matter how strong it is, it will eventually start to weaken. Exactly. That's a great analogy. All those stressors, little by little, they wear down our body's natural defenses and make us more susceptible to health problems. So how do we combat these stressors and support our bodies? Well, this is where it gets really interesting. Knowing your interest in natural ways to optimize well-being, I have to ask about progesterone. In his writing, Pete refers to it as a protector, which sounds almost too good to be true. Protector is a powerful word, and Pete doesn't use it lightly. He sees progesterone as this incredible safeguard against so many things. It's like a guardian for our biological structure and energy, yeah. helping to protect us from damage. So we're not just talking about hormones in the conventional sense here. It seems like this is about something much bigger. Exactly. Pete suggests that progesterone can help offset the negative effects of excess estrogen, those stress hormones we talked about, and even to some extent, radiation. Remember that article you shared about a yeah. specific condition? He talks about how progesterone could potentially play a protective role there too. Wow. Okay, so much more to progesterone than I initially thought. And there are a few other substances he talks about as well. In one of the articles you sent, I saw him mention thyroid hormone and coconut oil. What's his perspective on those? Right, so Pete sees thyroid hormone as being super important for regulating metabolism. It's all about how our bodies use energy, right? And he suggests that optimal thyroid function is key for overall health and vitality. If your thyroid is out of whack, it can disrupt that careful balance of energy and structure. And what about coconut oil? What makes it so special for him? Pete is really interested in the unique types of fat found in coconut oil. He says these fats are easy for our bodies to use for energy and might even offer some protective benefits, particularly for brain health. I've tried incorporating more coconut oil into my diet because of him. It's fascinating stuff. Right. I have too. It's really interesting to experiment with. It is interesting, though, because Pete doesn't just tell us to go out and start consuming these things blindly. In his writing, he always circles back to understanding the why behind their effects. It's about knowledge, not just popping a pill, wouldn't you say? A hundred percent. Pete is very clear on this. He cautions against seeing any single substance 
as this magical solution. We've got to appreciate that our bodies are these complex, interconnected systems and understand how these substances actually work within that system. So it's not just about adding coconut oil to our smoothies, but understanding why we're doing it and how it plays into the bigger picture of our energy, structure, and environment. Exactly. And this actually brings us to what I think is a really crucial point in Pete's work. His idea that we have a flawed understanding of human nature that colors the way we approach health. You know, that's one thing that really stuck with me, too. What exactly does he mean by that, and how does it connect to everything else we've talked about? Well, it seems like he's hinting that our current understanding of the human body, this idea that it's just a machine, might be incomplete. And this limited perspective might actually be holding us back when it comes to health and well-being. So are you saying we need to look beyond the purely physical aspects of health? Consider things like our environment, our mental and emotional states, maybe even redefine what it means to be human. That's deep. It is deep. But that's what makes Pete so interesting. He pushes us to think differently. It's about adopting a more holistic perspective, you know, recognizing that all these elements are interconnected. We are more than just machines. This has been incredibly insightful. If we can influence our health by understanding these fundamental principles of energy, structure, and environment, it's truly empowering. It means we're not just passive bystanders, right? We have agency. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. It's about creating an environment, both internally and externally, that truly supports our well-being. It's exciting to think about all the possibilities. If you're anything like me, your mind is buzzing right now. There's so much to explore. And if you want to dive deeper into Ray Pete's work, his website, raypeat.com, is a treasure trove of information. Approach it with the same curiosity and open-mindedness that you brought to this conversation. And as you continue your exploration, here's something to ponder. If, as Pete suggests, our very understanding of what it means to be human is due for a reassessment, what does that mean for the future of health and well-being? Something to think about.